So good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this online seminar on uh, operations of parallel pumps and how VFDs enhance the, uh, the utility of parallel pumps. My name is Siddharth Desai from Kisho Pumps. We thank everyone for registering for the seminar and we hope all of you, your family, uh, family members are healthy, spirited and staying safe. Uh, the seminar will be recorded and available on our website for further future viewing. We shall send out an email to all those who have registered with the link to view the presentation. Uh, we strongly urge all of you to send your questions to marketing at kishorepumps.com in addition to typing them in the chat window. Obviously, we'll try to answer as many questions uh, as possible during the seminar, but if we, in the interest of time, if we miss out any questions, uh, we would get back to you uh, on email if you can write those questions on email. Do mention your name, uh, mobile and email, preferably your company also with your question in the chat window to enable us to revert with any additional details. Uh, we will have a 30 to 35 minute uh, presentation, maybe 40 minute presentation, and then uh, we'll have uh, follow up question sessions. So welcome again, and I'll go into the presentation. Uh, so that can you share the screen please? Yes. Is it, is the screen visible now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Good, so the topic today, we have, the, the topic we have chosen today is uh, regarding the operation of pumps in parallel and the benefits of using variable frequency drives in parallel systems. This particular seminar is focused on centrifugal pumps only. Uh, all of you are aware that there are many other types of pumps but this particular seminar is focusing on centrifugal pumps uh, and how uh, the, the principles of parallel operation work for centrifugal pumps. Again, this is, uh, uh, this is covering the basics of parallel pumps. There are a lot more details and intricate uh, intricacies involved in the design of the parallel pump system. Uh, we may not have the time to go over all the details, but we'll try to cover the basics as much as possible in this uh, seminar. So the agenda for today we'll be covering is first, first we'll look at what is parallel pumping and what are its benefits. Then the working philosophy of pumps in parallel, which are running at constant speed, how VFDs and use of VFDs in parallel systems is possible. Uh, we'll also cover some case studies from our experience uh, in terms of parallel pumps with and without VFD. And then we jump into the summary of what we discussed uh, in, in, in the seminar. So just one slide, two slides about Kishore pumps for those of you who may not be, uh, 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 may not have got in touch with us so far. Uh, it was founded in 1963 by late uh, Mr. Narayan and Desai. It was incorporated in, as Kishore pumps in 1965 and we developed India's first vertical VS4 type pumps for domestic fertilizer and acid industry. Uh, after that, we brought in a lot of collaborations to further indigenize the single stage pumps in end suction, horizontal and vertical and the submersibles and uh, India's first domestically manufactured dry motor non clock submersible pump uh, was manufactured with uh, bias in 1985 with the German collaboration. Uh, we are headquartered in Pune. Uh, we have a vast experience in terms of pumps that have been supplied for sewage waste handling. Uh, chemical process, seawater, and acid corrosion resistant pumps. So metallurgy is one of our core strengths. We have a wide spectrum of metallurgy. Uh, we have a, 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 an in-house testing of the pumps along with VFD, which we can test the pumps on VFD. The, the designs are user and maintenance friendly. And uh, uh, understanding the application or the environment in which the pump is going to operate is at a very core or very heart of our pump selection or proposal making system, wherein we understand thoroughly how the pumps are going to operate, in what environment they are going to operate and what is the best suitable uh, design for a particular application. So now going into the, uh, the, the today's topic. So first we'll cover what is parallel pumping and what are its benefits. So a system wherein two or more, uh, just open the pointer. Sorry. So 
sorry just just a minute So uh, first we'll cover what is uh, parallel pumping and a system wherein two or more pumps discharging the liquid into a carbon header or a manifold is a parallel system. And I've just drawn a rough schematic of what a parallel pumping system is. So you have three pumps uh, which are connected, which are discharging into a common header or a manifold. And this is more or less how a parallel system or a parallel pump system looks like. So the total flow coming out of the manifold or the header is the algebraic sum of the individual pumps that are discharging the flow into the manifold. So this is more or less uh, the basic uh, schematic of a parallel pump system. Each pump adds to the total flow in the manifold, which allows operators to achieve variable capacity. So if you switch off two pumps and keep one pump off, you'll get the output equal to one pump. If you operate all three together, you'll get the output from the manifold equivalent to all three algebraic sum of all three pumps together. The benefits of parallel system are that the parallel pumping system allows for incremental flow augmentation over time for industrial and municipal projects. What it means is if a certain industrial project is or a, or a municipal project is uh, or is conceived, it is conceived for a certain capacity which is possible to be built over a course of time, maybe five years or 10 years, or in case of water supply or wastewater, sup wastewater treatment systems, they are designed for the flow rates which might be coming after 15 years or 20 years. But the plant still has to operate on day one, uh, which could be at 1 20th or 1 10th or 1 5th of the flow of the final 20 years. Still, how do we design a system that can accommodate or operate uh, the, the, the starting flow, even if the project is conceived for a total capacity of 15 to 20 years into the future. So parallel pumps allow for that kind of augmentation of capacity over time. Further, it allows for redundancy in system and ensures that flow continuity of pumps is, of flow continuity is there even if pumps are taken down for routine maintenance or repairs. So even if you're uh, out of three pumps, two pumps are not functional or they are taken out for repair, one pump can still operate and give the, the flow whatever is possible. If this was, to be, this was to be done with a single pump, single large pump, which is some of the flow of all three pumps, then if that pump were to be taken for downtime, then the entire plant shuts. So this is a, a redundancy of flow in the system is a big advantage of parallel pumps. Ideally for stable operation of all pumps, of the parallel pump system, all the pumps should be identical. That is, each pump should be a mirror copy of each other uh, for a, 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 a stable operation of the system. However, there have been instances where non-identical pumps are used. Still, uh, even if non-identical pumps are used, uh, the pressure generated by the pump should be same. So the main criteria of a stable operation in a parallel pump system is that the pressure developed or the pressure discharged by each pump should be the same. If that is there, then the parallel system should work fine even if the flow rates of each pump are different. So I'll give you some, share some pictures of our installations uh, all across India, which show how a parallel system looks like. So this is a picture from uh, a, a, a desalination plant near Chennai wherein we have installed the horizontal end suction pumps in parallel, as you can see a train of these pumps. And all of these pumps on the discharge from the discharge are discharging into a common header or a manifold. So this is a classic uh, photo or a classic installation of a parallel system for horizontal pumps. Then this is also one uh, recent installation, which is uh, of a soda ash plant in, uh, on, on, in, in Gujarat on the extreme west coast of Gujarat for a soda ash plant. So you can see these four pumps in parallel. You can observe that from the, from the picture that the size of all the four pumps is more or less identical. So this is a big, uh, this is a, 
uh, this is a criteria for, to ensure a stable operation of the parallel pump system. Then this is a two pump parallel system for a, a fertilizer plant in Goa, uh, where vertical pumps are installed, vertical sump pumps as many refer to it. Uh, so they are discharging into the same manifold. Then this is a pump parallel pump system for five pumps using the uh, vertical dry pit non-clock pumps uh, for Vijayawada. So this is uh, uh, a raw sewage pumping pit and pumping station for installation in Vijayawada, where you can see all the five pumps which are connected in parallel. Not necessarily the, all the five pumps are working. The, the plant designer sometimes designs uh, the flow which will be accommodated only in three pumps, then two pumps standby for uh, to ensuring that the, during downtime of the first three pumps, the flow is continued. So the redundancy in the system is something that is designed by the, the plant designer. Then this is a picture of a parallel pump for uh, for submersible pumps for sewage pumping station in Aurangabad, Maharashtra. So you can see that all the five pumps look identical. They are in fact identical and they are connected to a pipeline which discharges into the same header or the manifold. So these pictures, uh, what you saw are, are, are what or how parallel pump systems look like. So as I said, the basic criteria is if two or more pumps are discharging into a same header or a manifold, it is classified as a parallel system. And for stable operation, the pressure generated by all the five, all the, multi, all the pumps that are there connected to a common header should be the same. Now we'll come to the working philosophy of pumps in parallel running at constant speed. So first we'll look at what happens at constant speed uh, when multiple pumps are running in parallel, then we'll go to the speed control or variable speed. So, uh, on uh, where you can see the pointer right now, this is just a dummy data we have taken and uh, you know we have plotted a system curve. So most of the plant designers, they prepare a system curve uh, for the pumping station, which indicates that as the flow increases uh, in, in the system, what will be the total head loss or the pressure required to overcome uh, for the pumps? What this indicates is, if you see the blue line, it is starting from 10, that is 10 meters. Now, this is what it is, what, what this means is, it, what this means is that at zero flow, when there is no flow, there is still some head required to overcome. And this is known as the static head. So as most of you might be aware, for calculating the total dynamic head, you have a static head and a dynamic head. Dynamic head is primarily coming out of friction losses. So the static head in this case, as you can see, is around 10 meters. And as you increase the flow in the system, the dynamic head starts increasing and it reaches a maximum of around 62 meters or 63 meters at 3,500 meter cube per hour. This is again, uh, as I said, this data is for illustration purposes only. Uh, uh, there is, there may or may not be any actual pump or pumping station, which is corresponding to this particular data, but for illustration, we have chosen this particular data. Now, when first pump starts, so let's say we have this particular system wherein three pumps are operating or running in parallel, discharging into a common header, and this is the system curve. Then when the first pump starts, let's say pump one starts, then pump one will operate according to its characteristic curve and the intersection point, that is this red dot, the intersection point of the pump with the system is where the pump will operate. So uh, the, when the first pump starts in a parallel system, this is how the pump will, uh, the, the system uh, operation philosophy will look like. So in this case, the pump is operating, let's say at 2000 meter cube per hour and around 30 meters of head, 32 meters of head. So this is when one pump is operating. Now, when we operate two pumps, when the second pump starts, as you can see the red line, this red line, when the second pump starts, the flow gets added. So pump one plus pump two, that is Q1 plus Q2 gets added. And the Q1 and Q2 may be same or may be different depending on what kind of uh, flow design is there, but the pressure has to be the same. So as you can see, they're starting from the same pressure levels. That is what we call as a shutoff head. It has the same shutoff head. It is starting from that level and the flow gets added into the total header. And now the system is operating at this particular red dot, which is around 2300 or 2400 meter cube per hour. Now, 
when you add start the third pump as you can see here the, the green line here all the three pumps are working so pump 1 plus pump 2 plus pump 3 so all three pumps are working so you are getting a much bigger flow so instead of 2000 meter cube you are getting close to around 2700 or 2600 meter cube and the head you have to uh, come across come over uh, overcome in the piping system is also higher because as flow increases your frictional loss increases in the same diameter of the pipeline so uh, wherever the, the the curve intersects the pipeline is the operating point and as the more and more number of pumps are added into the parallel system and as more and more pumps are switched on the flow increases also the head of the system as a system not the pump but head as a system also increases because of the frictional losses so this is the basic working philosophy of parallel pumps when you add uh, when you start pumps in parallel the flow starts getting added into the system and the operating philosophy or the operation point of the total system is highly dependent on the system curve the pump or the output will always be dependent on where the pump curve of either individual pump or all the pumps combined where that curve intersects with the system curve here so as you can see the red dots is where the curves intersect the system curve depending on your system curve or the nature of your system curve uh, the intersection points will be different in some cases if you have a very high static head that is instead of 10 meters if you have let's say 30 meters or 40 meters and very low friction head then the curve will be more and more flatter than this particular curve so depending on your system curve the parallel system will give different output uh, so the selection of the pumps depending on what your lean mean and max flow are required the selection is based on that now what we saw till now is about the uh, parallel system so uh, a parallel system with constant speed so right now we have we are not changing or varying the the speeds much uh, now if we look at changing the speed or variable speed how does it look like so first of all what does a vfd do to the pumping system is something that i'll explain in uh, one slide so as you can see the chart here on the right you can see the speed of the pumps uh, on the top so this is 2000 rpm this is 1800 1600 1400 rpm so as the speed changes the nature of the pump curve this is this is the pump the black line is the pump curve the nature of the pump curve changes and i'll give you how it changes what are the relations of that how uh, the, the formula for that i'll share that in the next slide but what you need to know here is that as the speed changes the characteristic performance curve as we call it for each pump that changes so uh, that is a big advantage of vfd and again where that uh, the where the point of the individual pump curve or the combined curve of four or five multiple pumps intersects with the system curve is going to be the operation point or the output that will be given from the uh, total pumping's header so what vfds do is that they widen the operating range of each pump and enhancing the overall flexibility of the parallel system i'll cover one point uh, a special slide on this point again flexibility of flow and head from each pump over a wide uh, range instead of changing the impeller so with the use of more and more vfd systems you can accommodate flows in year 1 as well as year 20 as i discussed earlier that if your flows are projected to increase over time over 10 years 15 years or 20 years without vfd you would have to look at changing the pumps or changing the impellers at least but with vfd you can use the same pumps and eventually increase your capacity as and when uh, yeah, the time passes it is also very ideal for trial and error because sometimes what happens is you don't especially in municipal projects uh, the exact flow and pressure uh, requirement is sometimes not possible to calculate because of uh, how the piping system might have to change uh, in actual uh, concern versus the design pipeline so vfd allows you to have some trial and error method to achieve the exact duty point at site uh, once the pumps are installed and commissioned with vfd you can uh, the, we can have the lower number of spare pumps also so uh, you know you don't have to dedicate pumps for average flow, flow or peak flow uh, you can have the same pumps and with vfd you can vary the flow 
to achieve the output so your the, the 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 number of pumps that you require can go down and more importantly you, since you can have identical pumps with vfd uh, there is high redundancy into the system even from a spares inventory perspective so your capital cost as well as operating cost because of spares is substantially reduced when you go for identical pumps and vfd obviously depending on the nature of your system curve vfds can provide substantial power savings uh, to the overall system as well and also very importantly even at low uh, speeds the vfds uh, can provide or rather if the vfd speed is reduced the efficiency of the pumps even at lower speeds is not reduced to the extent that you would otherwise have to do by valve throttling so conventionally people used to go with the valve throttling method which is extremely inefficient or ineffective uh, with vfd there is no need for throttling a valve the discharge valve so you can reduce the speed and obtain the output it not only reduces the uh, not only enhances or keeps the efficiency optimal of the system but also reduces the wear and tear or the damage on the pump so there are several benefits of using vfd uh, in the system uh, as i said this this presentation will also be available on offline later for everyone to view now we'll cover one particular uh, working philosophy of a of a parallel system with vfd so again we come back we refer to the system curve which we referred earlier so you have a 10 meter static head and as your flow increases your frictional head goes on increasing you have a parallel system with three pumps Uh, q total is equal to q1 q2 q3 now in the earlier side i told you that there is a direct relation how we can estimate uh, how the output of a pump will change with changing the speed and that particular logic is called in pump technology or pump theory it is called the affinity laws of centrifugally operated pumps so the affinity laws basically provide uh, you know extrapolation or interpolation of flow head and power if the pumps were to be operated at different speeds provided that the impeller diameter is kept constant so uh, if you keep the impeller diameter constant and vary the speed how the flow rate head and power consumed by the pump will change is something that uh, we can estimate and calculate uh, very effectively using these affinity laws so what you see here as you change the speed the flow rate is directly proportional to the speed so if you change the speed by 20% your flow will increase by 20% if you reduce the speed by 20% your flow will reduce by 20% however with head and power it is a different uh, relation so there is a square proportion for the pressure or the head and for the power it's a cubic proportion so the, these factors need to be considered uh, while selecting and designing the parallel system and selecting the pump because Uh, if you desire to reduce your flow by let's say 50% by reducing the speed by 50% the head will drop substantially higher in square proportion of 50% so the the head will drop uh, more than that and power will also drop more than that so whether that reducing the flow by 50% what will be the head and whether that head is sufficient to overcome the uh, the the uh, required head in the system is something that has to be closely looked at while selecting and designing the system now here as you see that at 50 hertz if we operate one pump then the light green color that you see so pump 1 this is how the pump will operate and this will be somewhere the operation point of the system as you switch on the second pump it will go to this parrot green color and when you switch on the third pump the the system curve will shift to this dark green so as you can see the flow is changing and with constant speed if you operate this the 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 system only at one speed this uh, green green zone that you see from here to here is the operating range roughly that you can achieve uh, with constant speed with three pumps in parallel now what we do is if we change the speed of the pump and let's say reduce it to 40 hertz instead of 50 hertz so sorry one point i forgot to mention the the speed and frequency or the rpm and the frequency are directly related to each other so reducing the speed in effect entails reducing the frequency of supply and that is what the vfd does so by reducing the frequency of the vfd by from 50 hertz to 40 hertz the speed will reduce in the same proportion uh, the flow rate will produce uh, reduce in the same proportion and the head will reduce in square root and power will in cube cube root proportion 
So if the speed is changed from, or the frequency is changed from 50 Hertz to 40 Hertz, then you can see how the same pumps, the same three pumps if operated at 40 Hertz, how they will behave in a parallel system is what we can estimate effectively. And this is what is used very commonly. So at 50 Hertz and 40 Hertz, obviously the head is reduced. The flow is also reduced. But now what you can see is the, the total operating range of pumps is widened. Now it is from, let's say 1,500 to almost close to 27, uh, 2,700. Whereas with constant speed, it was only between 2000 to let's say 2500 or 700. But by just by keeping the same, by keeping the pumps same without changing anything in the pumps, just by changing the speed of the pumps, we are able to widen the operating range of the overall system. So this is a big benefit of VFD that uh, you can achieve a very wide range of flow rates from the system if you change the speed. And this is very much, uh, uh, this is a big advantage for a lot of industrial and municipal projects. You don't have to change the pumps or any parts of the pumps as and when there is augmentation in capacity. You design the pumps or design the system considering your maximum possible capacity, maybe five years, 10 years, 15 or 20 years into the future. And with VFD, you can achieve the flow even and on day one as in after 20 years. So this is the biggest advantage of VFD. Uh, that one can achieve in a parallel pumping system. So uh, this particular logic is uh, is very useful also in terms of uh, a new case study that we have achieved, which we'll cover later, wherein there is with the, with the, with the you know, space constraints that are increasing day by day, the pumping systems are required to be more and more compact and uh, obviously we cannot reduce the pumping system size or pump size below a certain level. So we are now going with multiple levels or multi-storied or multi-level pumping stations. Uh, and when I say multi-level pumping station, that is a parallel system. So pumps installed at two different heights or two different floors or stories discharging into the same manifold or the same header is what now we are progressing towards. And this has been possible only because of EFD. So not only the VFDs are able to contribute for widen or wider operating range of the pumps, but it is also making us, uh, it is also enabling the use of multi-storied or multi-stacked pumping stations <clears throat> to save on the ground space and uh, achieving the required output uh, uh, accordingly. So we'll cover the case studies uh, which are there uh, for these systems now. So this is the first case study. This photo you see is a photo of the actual plant. So this is in, in the Pune Cantonment Board. It's a 20 million liters a day sewage treatment plant, wherein you have the pumps installed in these two separate levels. As you can see, the multi-storied or the multi-stacked uh, pumping station. The output is discharging into the same header or the same pipeline. Uh, so how this is achieved is something that we had to work very closely with the consultant as well as the contractor. Uh, how this is, uh, the, the detailed case study is also available on our website. You can refer to that later. So the site is situated in a densely populated area with very limited space. The, uh, the, the sequential batch reactor, what we call this SBR basins uh, for the, area, the secondary treatment in sewage treatment plants, uh, they were planned, they had to be planned rather one above the other in a two storied structure, which was, uh, in, this was 2016. So this was first of its kind in India in, in, in that year. The raw sewage pump were expected to operate at two different heads. Uh, the flow rates were more or less the same, but the heads were different because the static heads were different since they were at two different levels, two different uh, uh, stories. So the peak flow was required to be at uh, 1,875 meter cube per hour at 28 meter for the upper basin. And the same flow rate for the lower basin was at uh, about 10 meters lower here. So how it was in, in conventional design, it was very difficult to achieve this particular, uh, uh, this particular performance from a system that is not using a VFD. So as you can imagine, pumps that are operating at different heights or different levels, one above the other, but still operating in the same discharge line, 
is, uh, is 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 quite tricky and with close discussion with the customer and the consultant we were able to achieve the correct logic which is also now integrated with the plc at the plant and it is working fine since last 2 years now so the same pumps were required to handle the lean and the average flow of both the basins uh, for this after detailed discussion of uh, with the customers we selected just one size of model with three pumps or uh, three pumps with the same size that is 625 meter cube per hour pump at 25 28 meter head this was the 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 best efficiency point of that pump and we selected the same pump to achieve uh, the the peak average and the, the the flows at two different levels of basin so two pumps were installed in the lower basin and one pump the third pump identical pump was installed in the upper basin the lower basin pumps were operated at much reduced frequency to develop the 17.1 meter head and the upper basin pumps were operated uh, at the rated frequency which because of which it developed the uh, 28 meter head it is completely uh, as i said uh, plc controlled uh, completely automated plant so the plc logic was supposed to be developed and given to uh, the contractor who incorporated in their design and now it is working fine for the last 2 years so this is how as you can see the basin 1 on the left and the basin 2 on the right so as you can see on the x axis the flow rates are more or less the same slight difference but uh, more or less the same but on the y axis the heads are different the head to be generated are different so this is the philosophy that we shared with the customer uh, after speaking with the consultant uh, and the the two pumps which are installed Uh, at what frequency they should operate to achieve the average flow and what should be the frequency of the third pump to achieve the peak flow everything was shared with the consultant and the co co contractor and it was uh, achieved accordingly so the customer achieved this so first of all they saved a lot on the ground space because of this multi storied uh, pumping station however they didn't have to compromise anything on the performance of the pumping system just because it was multi stacked or one above the other so this was possible only because of uh, using a vfd and more importantly the pumps were exactly identical so their spares inventory was drastically reduced they didn't have to go for multiple models uh, we we offered the same model same size exact identical pumps because of which their spares inventory the redundancy in the system is increased the spares inventory reduced and this is giving a large benefit to the operator uh, which is now uh, as i said into the third or even the fourth year of its operation so this was the first case study uh, about pumping system with vfd especially i wanted to share this because this is a unique project wherein the pumps are installed one above the other not not just one next to each other so this might give everyone a sense of how vfds and pumping systems are are uh, synergistic to each other and provide a multiplier effect to the overall operation of the plant the second case study is uh, related to uh, an intermediate sewage pumping station with a high friction head uh, so if you recollect we discussed how the system curve affects the performance of the parallel pump system uh understanding whether it is whether the static head is dominant or the friction head is dominant is extremely critical in understanding what uh will be the operating philosophy of the pumping station and with respect to vfd also because static head dominated systems have uh, have more flattish system curves which leads to uh i would say a, a more intricate logic for the vfd to be designed and then coded into the plc so understanding this was is is very critical so this particular case study uh was where it was a high uh, friction head system so as you can see the system called for four pumps running in parallel with a flow of 5500 meter cube per hour at 57 meter head uh this was the peak flow of 5500 whereas the lean flow uh, was 1200 uh, 1230 meter cube per hour however you can see the difference in the head at the peak flow the head was 57 meters uh, to be overcome whereas at the lean flow it was just 39 meters so this indicates that it was a very high uh, friction dominated system friction head dominated system as the flow reduces the head to be overcome in the system also reduces substantially so uh, that 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 understanding and then selecting and designing the pump accordingly uh, is very critical using vfds it was possible to select four pumps of the same duty condition as i said 
our our our, our first focus always is how we can reduce the variety of the models or the sizes at the at the customer's location because that gives benefit not only to the customer but also for for the manufacturer and the operator over time in terms of the service maintenance and the life cycle of the pump so we chose to operate we chose to provide four pumps or in fact we provided six pumps but two were on standby four operational pumps uh, for the same duty condition of 1385 meter cube per head at 57 meters and then we developed again a logic like what we did in the earlier case study uh, for that so a detailed operational philosophy was developed to operate one pump at lean load two pumps at average and four pumps at peak so with the vfd operate system it's always possible to take care of fluctuating loads uh, and this is all coded through in the plc so as you can see on the left bottom left this is the system curve here and when one pump is operating you can see that one pump was operating at uh, 12000 1230 meter cube at 42 hertz instead of 50 hertz so to achieve the lean flow we were required to operate one pump at 42 hertz to achieve the average flow of 2460 meter cube per hour we had to operate two pumps at 45 hertz uh, this is on the i'm referring to the curve on the right so to achieve the average flow two pumps at 45 hertz and to achieve the peak flow of 5537 meter cube per hour we had to uh, operate all the four pumps at 50 hertz completely so this is a classic example of how identical pumps can achieve the varying flow requirements using vfd without compromising on the efficiency of the overall system so i hope that these two case studies that we covered that is uh, the the pune cantonment board that is multi level uh, pumping station and uh, a wide operating zone in terms of the head of the system how it was able to uh, achieve the the performance using the vfd uh, since we have a bit time i'll uh, i'll cover one more case wherein uh you know we have uh, uh, uh it's not we have not prepared a slide for that particular case study but uh, i'll give you the 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 problems of not selecting a vfd just verbally mentioning it so we supplied to one large pumping station in uh, suvesh pumping station in south india and uh, the, the the tender specifications did not in, uh, ask for a vfd to be uh, 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 purchased or installed with the pumps the contractor obviously since it was not mentioned the tender they chose to go without the vfd and chose the auto transformer starter or the soft starter uh, what happened was that the pumping station that was designed was operate was designed to handle flows uh, for up to i think 15 years into the future i don't have the exact flow rate right now with me uh, but it was designed to operate uh, the maximum load which was going to come after 15 years considering the population increase in that particular area however when the pumps were commissioned the flow was quite less compared to the designed flow because the the the, the population was less than what was obviously less than what was what is projected for 15 years and the pumps that were required to handle the flow was also very less so the pumps uh, were running at a very low head because as we observed that at low flows the system head is very low so the pumps were operating at very low head and tripping continuously because it were uh, the, the 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 current was overshooting now when we encountered this problem we had a detailed site visit we discussed with the contractor and what we observed that uh, you know the the head was very low and even with a vfd uh, since the vfd was not installed we could not reduce the speed of the pumps and achieve a lower performance or a lower speed and the lower flow and head of the pump so the one option was that the contractor installs vfd uh, and operates the pump at lower speeds or the second option was that we change the impellers of the pump and uh, give them different impellers which could achieve the same uh, the, the required conditions uh, the required current conditions now after thorough discussion with the customer since the, there was already investments in the uh, the ats control panels the customer decided not to go with the vfd so we then he then purchased uh, four impellers from us and the the old impellers which were initially supplied considering the initial design conditions those impellers were kept aside removed from the pump kept aside in the stores the new impellers were installed and the pumps after that were working satisfactorily 
now as the flow increases at certain point the contract the, the customer will or the operator will have to remove the 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 impellers that are currently installed and refit the originally supplied impellers to achieve the final flow so if the vfds were provided in the first place this particular hassle would not have been uh, required and without any effort we would have just changed the flow or reduce the flow by changing the speed reducing the speed and still achieve the same output uh, from the pumps so uh, from these three case studies that we discussed two of which were with vfd and the third one we i explained to you that was the limitation or what the problems we might face if the vfds are not selected for such parallel systems obviously uh, uh, vfds are not a one size fits all technology uh, we have to have a close discussion with the pump manufacturer as to understand what uh, whether the a given system will uh, benefit from a vfd or not so it's it's it has to, it's it's not a as i said as i said uh, one size fits all solution there has to be close discussion and then only vfd has to be selected but there have been instances and we have seen a lot of recent cases that vfds give a, a, a kind of they they full they have a uh, they they have it's it's a good insurance policy from the pumping system to have because it provides for any kind of exigencies or emergencies that might emerge after the pumps are commissioned because especially in municipal projects the actual performance or actual duty conditions could vary substantially compared to the design conditions uh, for various reasons so uh, it's always a prudent practice to to first consider vfd uh, if there are if after thorough discussion or deliberation if vfd if you find that there are no substantial benefits accruing because of vfd then obviously we can drop that idea uh, but our, our as a manufacturer as a responsible manufacturer our first recommendation for pumps that are operating in parallel uh, especially in plants that are going to see augmentation capacity in the future we strongly recommend to consider vfd from the beginning so i hope from these case studies uh, all of you might have got some a sense of what parallel pumping systems are uh, what the trends are happening in parallel systems and how vfds can contribute positively to the systems especially i would like to emphasize one point here again that the trend towards multi level or multi stack pumping stations is increasing day by day we have we are seeing a lot of inquiries a uh, lot of interest from the customers since we are successfully operating uh, one of the one plant right now for more than 2 years in pune it's running fine Uh, the uh, it's it's proven it saves a lot of uh, ground uh, what we call as fsi so your area your ground area is reduced substantially but without compromising anything on the performance of the pumps so that is one area where i feel and 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 we strongly recommend also to for all the customers and all the plant designers strongly look at the savings that you can get or the possibilities of having multi stack systems Uh, uh to save on your area of the plant so now uh, i'll this is the last slide we have already 44 minutes into the presentation uh so i'll just summarize the points that we discussed in this presentation that in a parallel system a parallel system is a system in which two or more pumps discharge the liquid into the common header and each pump adds to the total flow in the manifold which allows the operators to achieve variable capacity requirements uh from the plant the parallel pumping system allows for incremental flow augmentation as we have as as we discussed that it is uh, you can future proof your system uh, because many industrial plants as well as municipal plants they they are designed for some augmentation of capacity in the future so parallel pumps with vfd uh, allow you to do that effectively for stable and trouble free operation in a parallel system uh, the the pressure of each pump to be developed should be identical flow can vary although it is not desirable but still flow can vary but the head should be identical absolutely otherwise there are other problems uh, that uh, that arrive and it leads to unstable operation in the in the system vfds provide more flexibility for parallel pumps and widen the operating range of each pump uh, enhancing the overall operating range uh, as we have seen that with changing the speed the overall intersection point of the pump curves with the system curve is widened so you can have on the same pumps a wider operating range the vfds can provide stable operation when the plant is commissioned and the design flow rate so as i said future proofing of uh, the flow rates and the capacities possible with vfd and with growing space constraints uh, this is i i think the biggest takeaway for everyone as well as for us 
since we did this project that with the growing space constraints barrel pumps with vfd can offer you the opportunity to having multi stack or multi story uh, pumping stations and without compromising any of the performance and still uh, save a lot on your area uh, and everything else so with that i think we have covered the the content of the presentation so thank you very much for your attention i'll now try to see some questions that are that some of you have raised i'll uh, we'll try to cover as many as possible uh, so the first question is uh, can we use single vfd to operate three pumps uh there are two aspects here so when you when when you say say single vfd obviously the power supply has to be different because uh, the 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 power supply so vfd is basically a frequency converter or frequency changer of the power supply so uh, this is something that we have also discussed a lot in detail with uh, our uh, uh, with our vfd vendors uh, so there can be a master servant relationship with vfd so uh, you have to have separate power supplies for each pump but you can always program them to operate uh in a certain way that is you designate one particular pump as a master pump and how that pump operates will decide the other pump how the other two or three pumps operate uh which we have done successfully in one of the case the second case study that i showed you that the the first pump is a master pump and the vfd dictates how the other pumps will operate effectively uh once the pump reaches full capacity then the second pump switches on and so on and so forth so there can be a master servant relationship which you can program into the vfd which is then coded into the plc but as far as the power supply is concerned obviously it has to be a separate power supply for each pump uh there is one question about what do i mean by identical pumps in parallel pumping uh whether identical bracket or no so identical pump means identical performance so each pump is characterized characterized by its uh head flow relationship that is how the head changes as you increase or reduce the flow uh you know that particular performance has to be the same and uh, uh if that performance is different then it they are they are they are said or they are called as non identical pumps so when i what we refer to ident identical pumps is that the performance of pump at a given flow has to be the same and then and the uh, characteristic curves of the pump should be matching uh, that is what we mean by identical pumps uh why don't we get cumulative flow in actual installation of similar pumps discharging to a common header that is q total not equal to q1 q2 and so on and so forth it's a very good question uh as i said the, the the main criteria of parallel or installing a parallel pumps is that the shut off head or the uh the the head at which the the head of the pumps at which the pumps are going to operate that flow that head should be same for all pumps that are working in parallel so if three pumps are working in parallel they could have different flow rates but the head generated by each pump has to be the same and that is why uh, if the heads are uh, if, uh, even if the heads are the same but the flow rates are different then your cumulative output that is q total will not be the sum of uh, will not be multiples of q1 because it has to be q1 plus q2 plus q3 where in q2 and q3 could be different from each other and different from q1 as well so that is the the basic relationship that we are looking at that the head of the pump has, has to be constant if it is not constant what happens is uh, the higher the pump that is having the higher head feeds tra starts feeding liquid to the pumps with lower heads so that is why it is important to have the same heads but the flows can be different and since the flows can be different your cumulative total may not be the sum of the first pump Uh, uh algebraic multiples of the first pump because uh, your q2 and q3 can be different depending on where the pump is operating having said that there we have also seen some instances wherein uh, there are there is some difference in the head of individual pump it is from a manufacturer's perspective it is not advisable uh, because it leads to a lot of unstable operation and the damage to the pumps but still uh, in some cases we have observed that the the systems are running with some varying variation of the heads individual heads from the system and still giving the uh, output 
so it is something that uh, 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 you know that 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 each individual site we have to configure and study and check uh what is the relation of size of impeller with flow head and power sorry i forgot to switch off the sharing i just realized that I'll switch off the sharing so that i am visible yeah all right what will be the uh, sorry the, my question was what is the relation of size of the impeller with head flow and power sir it's a very good question so as we saw uh, one slide which says that if you keep the impeller diameter constant your flow rate is directly proportional to the speed uh, your head is in square proportional to the speed and power is cube proportional to the speed the exact same relationship applies to the impeller diameter as well so if your speed is constant if you keep your speed constant and change the impeller diameter the same relationship you would observe uh, with changing the impeller diameter so keeping the speed constant your flow rate will be directly proportional to the impeller diameter if you increase the diameter of the impeller or reduce your flow will increase or reduce in the same proportion your head is relation it is uh, 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 is in square proportion to the impeller diameter and the the power is in cube proportion to the impeller diameter so the exact same relation that you have the speed keeping the impeller diameter constant is applicable to changing the diameter of the impeller keeping the speed constant uh what will happen in case of parallel pumps if one pump do not have the pump curve cutting the system curve uh in case of parallel if one pump one of them do not have the pump curve cutting the system curve so uh the question again i'll repeat that what will happen in case of parallel pumps if one of the pumps do not have the pump cutting the uh system curve so uh actually when we talk about parallel pumps and the graphs which i showed you those are actually the output that you get or the curves that you see the increasing head and flow curves are for the all the pumps combined so the 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 curves of parallel systems take into effect the combined effect of each pump individually and adding it to the total system so even if one pump is not cutting the uh, the system curve Uh, in parallel pumps we have to look at how all the three pumps combined together will be operating because if the first pump is as as, as your head in, as your system flow increases your system head increases as your system head increases the first pump will automatically adjust in a way uh, to operate at a particular uh, head because it cannot if it reduces it's a problem if it increases it can still adjust itself and the combined effect of the pumps will give you the required output so uh for each individual pump it uh, since it's operating in a parallel system uh, each individual pump even if it's not cutting the system head it 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 should not matter uh what uh, frequency what frequency above 50 cycles per second that is 50 hertz the pump motors are fit to operate uh now this is something that the motor has to be designed for so if your pump or if your motor is designed for 60 hertz of operation uh then you can go up to 60 hertz but beyond that you won't be able to go that normally in india most of the motors are 50 hertz so the design the, the standard design philosophy or the practice is that you design the peak flow or the highest duty condition should be selected for 50 hertz and Uh, the motor should not be required to exceed 50 hertz you can uh, adjust on the lower side but we seldom go above uh, 50 hertz uh, unless your motor allows us uh, to go into 60 hertz does uh, during starting of a pump vfd can be helpful can it replace soft starters during the starting of the pump yes it's a very good question and uh, in fact vfds incorporate they have they act like soft starters so it is very much beneficial to have vfds and uh, during starting of the pumps uh, if you have a vfd then there will be a gradual increase in the current in uh, as against your dol starter or your star delta starter uh, you will have a, a gradual increase in the current and it is it is it it gives all the benefits of a start, soft starter while starting 
in addition to the flexibility of reducing or increasing your speed also so bfds are more flexible compared to soft starters uh i think we have time for one more question here uh we have one case where submersible pumps are installed for same capacity and head if one pump starts it gives 500 meter cube per hour flow and if second pump starts it just increases to 600 meter cube per hour and further if third pump starts the flow does not uh increase more than 650 cubic meter per hour why would it be so so uh, it's a very good very good point and uh, there are two aspects to it one is whether all the three pumps are identical even if they are generating the same head whether at that head they are giving the same output that is the first consideration you need to check and second is whether as you increase as you are increasing the flow how steep your friction head is going is increasing if your friction head is increasing very steeply then your flow will not be the sum of each individual flows again even if the pumps are operating or if they if the pumps are giving the same output at the at the head so it is a function of your system characteristics how steep or sloping is your system curve and uh, if it's a high friction head dominated system then if, when you turn on the second pump it will the the system curve will steep get steeper when you operate the third pump the system curve will get even steeper so you have to consider you have to check what the system curve is and based on what that system curves and how the friction head increases your uh, pumps uh, the output will vary accordingly so it is highly possible that even if they are identical pumps if your head uh, if your friction head is increasing drastically by changing the flow from 500 to 600 uh, so that's why you might be getting 600 and not next a 1000 because your system curve is increasing drastically and the pump system curve or the combined effect of the pumps is cutting off at 600 and not at 1000 so that is possible uh, uh, and and the system curve or the characteristics of system system head needs to be checked accordingly uh all right so i think uh, i think we are uh, running out of time now i'll just check if there is one possibility for one more question uh i have my engineering team with me mr arshi do you do you have one more question for me i don't see the ones that you have Sent it here. Okay, uh, there is one question that is there any thumb rule for the number of times a VFD can start and stop for a given time frame? Uh, for from a VFD's perspective, it is it is more flexible, I would say. But the deciding factor is more about the motor. That is. what start stop cycle the motor is designed for because the vfd can take higher start stops that is something that we understand from the vfd vendors uh we, so far the discussions that we have had with the vfd vendors we have not seen any limitations in number of start stops of the vfd uh, uh, for the vfd but the deciding factor is more on the number of start stops of the motor so each motor is designed for a certain duty that they are stand as s1 s2 uh uh you know there are there are ic standards for that that a certain start stop per hour eight starts up for hour 10 starts up for hour 20 starts up so the motor duty or the motor starting stop uh, cycles dictate whether the the, the vfd can be started or, or not so the vfd per se can give you flexibility but the motor is a deciding factor in terms of deciding uh, how frequently the pump can be start or stop uh, in that also there is some uh, uh, even if the motor is designed for a very high duty that is more frequent start stops in a in a uh, uh, in an hour the pump especially where you have a very uh, it does not matter so much in water application but when you have chemical applications high pressure applications the pumping system as such will also decide on the start stops because if you have a very high suction head say 30 bar that is 300 meters 400 meters of suction head and if you are continuously starting stopping the pump that will give a lot of problem to the pump so uh, motor prima facie is the deciding factor the number of start stop but also the pump in what application it is running and whether the frequent start stops are possible uh, from a mechanical perspective to the pump are also to be considered and uh, then the plant has to be decided accordingly so i think uh, uh, we have answered some of the questions we have 
some of the others we have noted down and we'll be replying to them individually on email if you have provided your email uh, also we'll be sending a link to this webinar uh, for the video as well as the presentation to our link to our website from where you can download the pdfs of the slides as well as you can watch the video so we once again thank you for your attention for your time and i hope it was a productive one hour session for all of you uh, we look forward to any feedbacks you have uh, on email. As I mentioned, you can send anything on marketing at kishorecoms.com. Uh, also, from an application perspective, if you have anything new that you can suggest and we can discuss it out, we'll be happy to address to those questions also. So thank you again, once again. Uh, have a nice day and take care uh, uh, and stay safe. Thank you so much.